to Team Keep It Clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask any NFL question you want and we answer it in a video just like this. Want to be part of it? You can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. You can send it directly on Patreon. Um, team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I love you. You watching this, I love you. I hope you're having a really, 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 really good day. Uh, thank you for watching it. We got some great questions, some very interesting questions. Then this first question, it came way out of left field. I, I, I didn't see this one coming, but I was like, oh, okay now. Um, but we got some great questions, as we always do. I, I thank you all for just always engaging with the channel, always sharing your input with the channel, always sharing your input with each other, just everything, man. Thank you. Love y'all. Let's do it. First question came from my boy Rico. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and the fam. I'm going to be quick in this email, so here we go. I strongly believe that if Urban Meyer is let go from Jacksonville or something crazy of that nature, I believe the Ravens will pick him up as an offensive coordinator in the offseason. Simply because he's straight to a certain degree, his schemes will probably fit the Ravens' offense perfectly. Once LJ gets healthy, I feel like that's because our receivers are young, fast, and hungry. Those are my thoughts. Tell me what you think. Oh, we starting off like that. <laughs> that would be wild, man. But, hey, Ravens mess around, hire uh, Urban Meyer. He going to be looking at wide receiver coaches, quarterback coaches, uh, running back coaches, offensive line coaches. Say, oh, y'all are a bunch of losers. What have you guys won in your lives? What have you accomplished? Where are your accolades? Because that's apparently what he did. And he admitted to it, too. He said, yeah, I told my other guys that. I told my coaches that. He called them losers. Asked them, what have they won? So I, I, I don't think that would happen. <laughs> I don't know, man. It just, if that's what's going on, and I'm not saying that coaches can't have hard uh, discussions with other coaches, but to degrade your guys and really almost dis disrespect your guys like that, if you're supposed to be the leader uh, and, and you're doing that, saying stuff like that, um, and really just making yourself high and mighty, like you're perfect. I mean, you look at your record. You, you clearly, <laughs> something ain't going on right now. Something ain't working. Um, but you, you still walking around like Mr. Big Chest. I just don't think that that would work um and also another thing Harbaugh would never hire him he would never hire Urban Meyer reason being because I feel like Urban Meyer if he had some success then he's right now he's a head coach he's a fresh head coach um this is first year head coaching in the league hasn't been successful but he still is a head coach um then I, I feel like he could potentially pose a threat to Harbaugh to take over for Harbaugh as a head coach. And that wouldn't fly on Harbaugh's radar. Now, if, if he worked with Harbaugh before sometime in the past, then he got a shot at being an offensive coordinator. But I, I don't think he did. So I, I, I'm going to have to pass for this one. Love how we started off. All right, next question came from my guy, Jai Baby 78 He said, hope all is well engraving this. Jai, two questions. Why is no one holding Harbaugh accountable for the two-point conversion fails? Oh, oh, um, we have been. For sure. And not, not even the fails. It's not that they failed. That, that's not it. It's that they, they did it when they didn't have to. And more so, all right, the, the first one, all right, cool. The one against the, uh, the Steelers, all right, cool. You want to go for the win, da da da, da. But it's, like, it's, it's, it's funny because his explanation for why they went for the two against the Browns, he said, all right, uh, he said, if, if you go for the two later on, to, to tie the game at the end of the game and you don't get it, you lose. But you, just the previous week, you went for the two. And I know, oh yeah, the cornerbacks were all hurt. Uh, but the, just the previous week, you went for the two to, to end the game. You going for that two, it would have ended the game and you went for it anyway. Could have won, could have lost, but you lost. Okay. The play was great. The play call was great, though. I, that, that play call, I give that play call a 10 out of 10. Execution, T.J. Watt coming in free. 
he he came in faster than the ball did. So, but anyway, against the Browns, with, with that explanation, I was like, uh, no, still no, because all right, and he he made it sound pretty. He 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 prettied it up. He put makeup on it on and all that. He did all that. He made it look look prettier than what it was. But still, you 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 made the situation that much harder because he's like, oh yeah, all right. If if we didn't get the two point conversion, then we we know what kind of shape our team is in. We know what he, what we have to do moving forward. We know because if if we get it now early on, okay, that knocks it out. We took care of it. But if we don't get it, then we know what we have to do. It it then becomes a nine point game. But and, oh, and, and and we don't we don't have to go for two to end the game. But again, there was. A good amount of time left your defense was playing good and you could have made it a one score game one score game with just Justin Tucker kicking a point after touchdown he's only missed like I think one in his career and that was against the Saints and that the, 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 the oh that game was crazy and Lamar's first touchdown game by the way um but anyway Justin Tucker was 99.99 percent good for that so instead of making it a one score game, you decided to okay go for two early, but you could have you could have gotten to a one score game, got it to an eight point game, and again there was a lot of time left on the clock. Say for instance, worst case scenario, all right, now you're down by eight. You stop the Browns, you get the ball back, you get a touchdown. All right, you're down by two now. You go for two, you don't get it. Ah oh, man, we ain't get it. You just gotta make another stop. What your defense had been doing, you just got to make another stop, though. So, I mean, it's the, with, with the way that he explained it, it still didn't make any sense. It, it was just, I, I, uh, it, anyway. So, yes, my point being, we have been holding Harbaugh accountable for those two-point conversion attempts. He said, do you think Harbaugh's decisions have held the Ravens from maybe winning the last two games versus the Steelers and the Browns? And of course, we will never know if we would have won, but I would have rather seen extra points than two failed conversions. I agree. Um, I, I do think Harbaugh is not a bad coach. He's not a bad coach, but his decision-making situationally sometimes could be a little iffy. It can be a little iffy. And, and not even sometimes that is just so aggressive, but sometimes it can just be downright cocky and arrogant. Um, and I just, it, a, a lot of times I just feel like it's, it's just not the smartest decisions that could be made uh, for the team. I just don't. Um, and especially these past two weeks, and especially this past week against the Browns, for sure. I, um, you're playing with your backup quarterback, and you... You put even more pressure on him by doing it that way. You put even more pressure on him by doing it that way. So I just, I, I, I wasn't with it. Um, so question two, Gregory last season, Roman. Uh, we are on the 40 yard line. We only need around 25 to 35 yards to get in Tucker's range. Uh, well, his range is endless to me, LOL. Uh, why would Roman throw a deep ball on first down? What happened to the quick slant screens and run plays? We had two timeouts and uh, one minute and six seconds left. That I didn't have a I didn't have a problem with that uh, play call. I, I didn't. I, I understand the situation. Um, but Tyler Huntley, he saw Hollywood, felt like he had a shot. He took it. I didn't have a problem with that. One. I know a lot of people did. I I, I didn't though. Um, Tyler Huntley and uh, Hollywood, their connection, it's just it's off. It's been off. The deep ball connection is off and, and it's been off. Um, but again, Hollywood is a one. Tyler Huntley is a two. Now, Tyler Huntley, I'm, I'm expecting him to be the one uh, since Lamar is out. As of this recording, I'm recording this on Monday at 2.01 p.m. Eastern time. So it hasn't come out what Lamar's injury is yet, how long he's going to be out for yet. But I am just I'm, I'm moving forward as if Lamar is going to definitely be out for the Green Bay game and, and possibly another game after that. But, again, by the time you see this video, we'll probably know. Um, but with Tyler Huntley being the, the one, the, the QB1 now, um, then he'll be practicing more with Hollywood and they can get 
more of a feel for each other, for, feel for each other especially when it comes uh, to the deep ball. But anyway, he said none of the plays on the drive were efficient, nor were they the players' fault. Well, other than the offensive line not blocking as usual. Uh, skip the second and third down because the plays were so obsolete and irrelevant that they don't need to be mentioned. Okay, on fourth and six, why throw a slant um, well, well under five yards? Why not push the slant out a little further? What's your thoughts on Roman's play calling on the last drive? If that's what it was, to me, it was pointless to get the onside kick if Roman play calling was going to get four and out in less than 35 to 40 seconds. It was only 33 to 34 seconds left on the clock when the Browns stopped us. Go Ravens. Sorry for the long rant. I'm just so upset. Go Snoop. You can do this if Lamar doesn't return. I don't think I want Lamar to, but I don't think I want Lamar behind that offensive line. Um, on that call, uh, Denzel Ward, he was backed off of Rashad Bateman a lot. He knew. <laughs> he, he, he knew. Um, and what my guy JT pointed out to me is that it, it looked like Hollywood was supposed to sort of rub his corner. Uh, to just create a little bit more uh, space for Rashad Bateman. Um, that was obviously Tyler Huntley. That might have been his the guy that he was looking at before the snap, what he was thinking about. That might have been his hot read, just in case the Browns blitz, which they certainly did. But it, it was not a bad play call. Because, um, again, Tyler Huntley, he ain't have no time. He had no time. And Browns, they sent it. They sent it. They sent the house, man. And... Um, so I don't think it was the worst play call. I just think it just they Tyler Huntley had to get it out, and that's who he trusted. That's who had been going off, and he I think he expected him to be a little more open. And, and pre snap, he probably looked a lot more open than he ended up being. Denzel Ward, he ended up closing on him, and again, because Ty, Tyler Huntley did not have many options on that play. It was either you take a sack, you just throw it up for grabs. Or you throw it to the trusted receiver who's been making so many plays for you in this game. And he went with the third option. Speaking of Tyler Huntley, next question came from Ravens Flock. He said, what's good in Graven? I'm going to get right to it. Ravens Flock is calling for the front office to let Lamar go and ride with Huntley as a permanent starter. Obviously, that is not a good idea. Do you think the talk will get to them and they make mistake the mistake of letting Lamar Jackson go Oh, this is such a good question. And, and yes, this has been what a lot of people have been talking about recently. Uh, a whole lot of people. I, I've been seeing it. I saw somebody say the, uh, just today, oh, man, I would just much rather uh, ride with Tyler Huntley, sign him for like a $200 million contract. Let Lamar go because he's regressing. And a lot of people, it's crazy because. People, they have uh, recency bias. And, and you can't blame them because, hey, NFL, what have you done for me lately, right? They have recency bias. But Ravens are 8 and 5, I believe. Um, but people, they forget that 7 out of those 8 wins, without Lamar, mm, they probably don't happen. They probably don't happen. Well, six, actually, six, because one of them was Tyler Huntley in the Bears game. Um, and the, uh, the, the seventh one that I was talking about, uh, well, well, two of them, two of them that I was talking about, well, one was the Tyler Huntley game, Lamar obviously didn't play, and the other one was the Browns game with Lamar threw the four picks. Tyler Huntley, he could have won that game. <laughs> if, if Lamar threw four picks and the Browns ain't win, yeah, Tyler Huntley could have won that game. But Lamar is, is the reason that the Ravens have been alive. Lamar is the reason why Harbaugh is even still the Ravens head coach. Lamar is the reason for so many of Ravens records that have been broken. Lamar is the reason that the offensive coordinators like a Greg Roman, they, they, get, they get a nice little boost. They get some little extra XP in their offense. Lamar is the reason that a lot of offensive linemen over the years have been overrated. Lamar is the reason that the Ravens felt like they could get away with not really doing too much with the offensive line in different years. Lamar is the reason for so much. We could keep going. Like, we, we could really keep going. You, and y'all know we could keep going. But since Lamar has had a slip up the past couple of games recently, his play has not been so team keep it clean. So many people like, all right, well, we just... Let's move on. Let's go. It's Tyler Huntley time. Now, 
the same way we talk about coordinators, we talk about the situation, uh, we, we talk about context and whatnot, that's very important. That's very important really with anything because we cannot just take everything for face value. Reason being, like an example, in the game yesterday, well, not yesterday when you're watching this, but in, on Sunday in the, against the Browns, CBS, they put up a graphic and they compared, and I was just like, wow, this is just, this is crazy. There's no way that they can be like this lazy and like this, like really? They put up a graphic, Lamar Jackson's first half compared to Baker Mayfield's first half. And I was thinking like, what? They, they, <laughs> they really are doing this? Lamar Jackson left the game. He left the game. How can you compare their first halves? And if, if they would have put Tyler Huntley, okay. But they, and even if they would have put Tyler Huntley and Lamar Jackson together, combined, versus Baker Mayfield, oh, okay. But no, they put Lamar Jackson. And it was just like, what? Context matters. So with this, with Tyler Huntley, we rocking with Tyler Huntley for sure. Y'all already know what time it is, especially him being from down here too. Oh, yeah, you already know what time it is. But... With Tyler Huntley, we rocking with him for sure. We love what he's done in the Bears game. Love what he did in the Browns game for the most part, too. Minus the two fumbles. Yeah, that, that was unfortunate, but it, it happened. So, but with Tyler Huntley, something that we got to remember for these games. And there's obviously a limited amount of film on him. Most of the film that you see uh, is going to be from college. You can look at some little tidbits here from the Bears game. You can look at tidbits from this game, too. Uh, you could look at last year from what the Giants and Jaguars game, just a little bit of stuff, but you ain't got too much. But in both of these games, the Browns and against the Bears, they were both games where Lamar Jackson was expected to start and finish the game. So these teams were preparing for Lamar Jackson, not Tyler Huntley. What happened? Bears game, it's Lamar Jackson starting, Lamar Jackson started, Lamar Jackson. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Lamar Jackson sick. Uh oh. All right, well, Tyler Huntley, you're up. You're starting now. And Bears are like, whoa, whoa, hold up now. No, 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 we, we've been preparing for Lamar Jackson all week. Not Tyler Huntley. Put in Lamar. Hold on, Lamar, he balled up. He feeling sick, whatever he got going on. That's him. It's Tyler Huntley time. And Bears are like, oh, man, we, we were not expecting this. Browns game. Lamar Jackson does start. He gets knocked out the game. Insert Tyler Huntley. Browns weren't preparing for that. They weren't preparing for that. And that's not to take away from anything that Tyler Huntley did at all. Because he came in there and did his thing. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. But I, I just, I, I want to see consistency. want to see consistency because people are ready to throw Lamar Jackson away so fast. But, all right, Tyler Huntley, okay, yeah, let, let's roll with him. They're ready to throw away Lamar so fast. And it's like, whoa, what? What? Because he's having this slump? Because he's been playing bad recently? Oh, we're ready to just toss him away. Like, he has not done so much for the Ravens organization. Like, what? And it's just, it's crazy to me. Every time I see something like that, it's, it's just, it's, it's wild. But for a lot of people, it's not surprising. It's not surprising. When I see the people who it comes from, um, when I know a lot of their patterns, uh, their thought process, things that they have expressed, whether it be in the comment section, whether it be on Twitter, wherever it may be from. Um, so it's crazy. Uh, oh, but I forgot what his question was. Oh, he said, do you think the Ravens, the talk will get to the Ravens and they make the mistake of letting Lamar go? I don't, but I do think with Eric DaCosta, like, nah, it is, is you, you can't, you can't, man, you, you can't, but at the same time, I think with Eric DaCosta, him being the GM that he seems to be, when it comes to players, when it comes to coaches, no, but when it comes to players, um, he looks at everything, uh, he looks at everything, he'll look at everything. What I do hope is that for as long as Lamar Jackson is out, I hope Tyler Huntley lights it up. I hope he goes off because this will give Tyler Huntley a shot. 
with another team next year. Just to give him a shot. So I, I hope he goes off. Off. And it would be nice if, if Ravens could keep Tyler Huntley, but I just, especially if he goes off for however many games he plays, it's just, it's something that's just not going to happen, man. It's not going to happen. Te teams are going to be willing to give something for Tyler Huntley to come up off the Ravens, man. Um, so I hope that's what the case is. And so, so Tyler Huntley, he could end up being a, a starter in the NFL. I would love that so much for him, man. I would love that for him. But um, I don't think the Ravens will, will do that. We'll be like, all right, well, we, we're going to roll with Tyler Huntley now. All right, Lamar, you're going. That would be a, a, a foolish act on their part. I, I don't think it would be smart at all. Uh, and it would really show a lack of appreciation. Like, don't, don't forget where you came from. Do not forget where you were headed to. Being four and five, and the season was dead. Do not forget what happened, who you put in the starting lineup, and who literally changed the entire culture on this team. Don't forget it, because if you forget it, it's going to come back to bite you, to burn you, and to beat you down. Trust. Next question came from my guy Dominic. He said, Engraven, I hope everything is well. I try not to let the Ravens bring me down, but they do. <laughs> Offense just disappoints me every week and never fails. But after seeing the inactives for this Browns game, one that surprised me was Project Pat. My question is, what effect on the offense did you think it had with him being out or him not being out there uh, for this game? I think it had a positive impact on the offense. And that's not a shot at Patrick Ricard, but I think it made them actually use their receivers more. Because, you know, for some reason, and I know Project Pat, he be blocking a lot. He's like an extra lineman, too. He's a fullback. He's a lineman. He's a wide receiver. He's a tight end. He does it all. Uh, but I think it really made them use their receivers and have their receivers out there that much more. Uh, so that's only a, a good thing. It's only a positive thing. Uh, and he also said, uh, with Lamar going out with an injury, uh, we don't know the significance yet, but how confident are you in the team rebounding going down the stretch? I feel uh, when they have to get the job done, they don't. But when you least expect it, we prevail. Um, but with the Jackson timeline of question, do you think Tyler Huntley can rally this team down the stretch? I, I do think he can. I do. I do. I am. Um, I, maybe I, I got a different kind of confidence in Tyler Huntley than a lot of people. Boy, I know my guy JT. He got a lot of confidence in Tyler Huntley. But um, I, I, I am more than confident that Tyler Huntley can make this thing happen. I do. Because he is like just another version of Lamar. He really is, man. And I, I, I saw yesterday early on, uh, well, his first, literally er, super early on, he completely missed his first throw. And I was like, whoa. But once he settled in, which it didn't take him long to settle in, he looked more and more comfortable. Start making more and more plays and just look better and better. So I am, I'm very confident in Tyler Huntley doing this thing. Uh, and I do not feel like, oh, since... Since Lamar is out, initially I thought, I'm like, man, Lamar out, season over. But no, I, I, I don't think so. Because uh, when, when I was watching the game live and they said Lamar was out, and I was, and I was thinking, man, if, it, if, it's, if it's a season-ending injury for Lamar, then that could be a wrap. But I, 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 don't, I, I don't think that's the case with Tyler Huntley. Um, and he also said, tough loss out there today, not only for the fans, but for the team. Well, I, I think for the team first. And then the fans later. <laughs> but anyway, he said, I always try to see if I can find any positives that we can build on. One positive I seen was Bateman. When he actually gets targets, he produces, and that's what I love about him. He looks to always fight for them extra yards, and that's what we need as a team. Huntley was out there trusting his receiver to make a play with no shade in Lamar, but I wish Lamar would do the same. My question is that with more opportunities, do you think Bateman can produce more and more every week? And what did you like about his performance this week? P.S. That was his first NFL touchdown, if you ask me. They didn't even show a replay of it, so. Sadly. Well, they, they showed the replay on, on TV. Yeah, they, they showed the replay. But yeah, that should have been his first NFL touchdown for sure. Um, Rashad Bateman, he looked good. He looked comfortable. Uh, he looked ready. Th this showed why he, um, why, the, why when he came back from injury, the Ravens had him out there so much in his first game. Um, they know that this guy is good. Uh, they know that he can play. And he showed again, like, that's why they benched Sammy, man. 
It's, it's, it's Rashad Bateman time. So, yeah, he looks the part. <laughs> Next question came from Asia. And this was a couple of days before the game. She said, why aren't the Ravens using Rashad Bateman? And do you think that he will have a burst out or not? Boom. Browns game. Ari took care of it. And the last question on this episode uh, came from Taryn. He said, Aang Raven, looks like without Marlon Humphrey and the rest of the cornerbacks listed as questionable, who can play corner if they are ruled out? Do we have anyone on the practice squad who can step up? Thank you. And yeah, that um, ended up being uh, Robert Jackson. Well, not even that he necessarily stepped up, but he stepped in. Uh, we had Chris Westry. Uh, we had Tavon Young and we had Anthony Averett and they were out there for most of the game Chris Westry came out for a little bit um, But those were the guys that were out there uh, and they they did their thing They um Chris Westry. I thought I thought he had a decent game I, I, I felt like he was just on the receiving end of some really bad penalties man some really bad penalties um, But he, he did all right given the situation uh, He did give up a little bit too now and Anthony Averett did as well, but I, I just I mean the the then it's not Marlon Humphrey and it's not Marcus Peters. So it was still some 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 decent play though, in my opinion. Um I do not think it was their either one of the two's worst game uh, of the year at all. Um and as far as Robert Jackson, he got in there a little bit. I think he got some something, something happened. Cause I remember seeing seventeen. I forgot what happened. It was a it was a bad play though. It was either a penalty or something happened to him. I forgot what it was though. But anyway, um Shout out to Jimmy Smith. Congrats to Jimmy Smith for having another baby. Um, so he uh, he would. That's why he was out this game. Um, but so now, so I guess he'll be back. If, if he'll be back next week, if he can find a babysitter. So cause you know, when when, when the, the woman they first had a the baby, they'd be tired, they'd be exhausted, and they already got. I think he got like three kids, three or four, something like that. I think he got three. Um, but hey, the kids could help around. And, and the kids could help around the house to help with the baby and stuff. And then Jimmy could help with the Ravens. Keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. Gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and grave it. Right and grave it. Shout out to Graven.